Hi, my name's Hash. Uh, I'm basically going to tell you today a little bit about my Neato XB11 vacuum cleaner and a little modification I made to it that I call uh, a dustbin computer. So I basically took uh, one of the Neato dustbins and modified it and put a chumby inside there so that I can connect wirelessly to my XB11. Uh, the Chumby that I use is essentially this one from Best Buy. They were on sale uh, last Christmas for I think $40 where they're normally $100. So I have a ton of these laying around now. Uh, and they look like this little guy right here. So I basically ripped the case off, everything out of it, and took the guts and mounted it inside this. So I milled out a spot for the screen. There's a little uh, on off button right here to turn on and off. And I'll show you the changes I made inside my Neato XV11 so that I could just drop this in so that I have a working vacuum cleaner that I can use around the house, but at the same time for experimentation with robotics, I can plug uh, this little XV11 uh, dustbin computer in there, I call it, and experiment with it and try different things like uh, localization and mapping with a robot operating system. Uh, or just kind of anything you want to try with this robot. So let me uh, set that up and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's my Neato XV11. Uh, you know, pretty much looks completely bone stock. Uh, the changes I made are internal. I, you know, I turn it on, comes on just fine. You know, I could take it, I could vacuum right now with that standard dust bin inside of it. So I'll turn it off and I take out the standard dustbin and what you'll notice is inside here uh, there's a USB cable that I've hidden. So I can tuck this cable back inside or take it out when I want to put in the, the dustbin computer. So this is actually wired into this connection that's right here which is the USB connection on the XV11. I hardwired it onto the board that's inside here. I also wired in uh, power to this from the batteries directly. So if you plug this into your computer, it'll pretty much toast the thing. But since the only thing I'm plugging it into is my own device I made, and I know that there's 17 or 14-ish volts on here, I won't plug it into my computer. Uh, I know it's not standard, but this connection will actually back through the port that I used to route it in here. Everything's sealed inside here so the dust won't get in. So I had to be kind of careful and the connector size was important which is why this is actually heat shrinked and it's just the USB connection so that if I ever want to take this thing apart again the board and all this stuff will actually come out. Because I mean when you're messing with these things you kind of routinely take it apart. So I didn't want to be locked into something I'd have to desolder every time I wanted to, to take the thing apart. So here on the dustbin computer uh, I'll actually have pictures on the blog you'll see below that'll be uh, close-ups and everything. But you can see I have a tiny fan right here. This uh, gets the air out. The little wireless card that's here can kind of heat up along with uh, the chumby board itself that's inside here. So, you know, if it just sat there, I want to actually be able to use the thing, you know, maybe an hour at a time or longer. The batteries, you know, last forever when you're using this chumby in here because normally the vacuum's running the vacuum fan and the brush and all this stuff that takes a ton of power and this little thing doesn't take hardly any power in comparison. So, you know, I've actually run this over an hour, hour and a half at a time, experimenting with it while it's on the Wi-Fi network, everything, and, you know, it hardly even drains the battery in this at all. So it's pretty sweet, you know, they got, they got some pretty good batteries inside here. So this back part comes off. This is just a standard uh, air filter right here that I basically cut out with an X-Acto knife. I cut out to hold the fan. Uh, and the filter material is kind of thick, so I used some, uh, some crazy glue. I think I used the thin kind, this uh, thin uh, CA type glue. Uh, it's used for RC car tires, so it flows in uh, around the rim. And you, can, you have to like basically drip it here on this mat. It soaks in, and it almost has like a fiberglass effect. So I was actually able to screw this little fan directly into uh, the mat itself and I didn't have to even put any nuts on the other side or anything. So I have a connector on that as well if I want to remove it. Uh, I thought I might have to, you know, to get the USB cable and stuff in because initially this hole here I cut a little smaller 
and I realized if I cut it a little bigger, I can kind of just push the cable through when uh, when I connect it. Because initially when I made it, I plug it in, I set it in there, it would just turn on. Later I added this little uh, power button right here, so it's pretty nice because you know normally once you buy one of these things, you're into robotics, you know you vacuum with it occasionally, and you're always screwing with the thing. So it was nice to be able to leave this little dustbin computer inside and then just kind of hit the power button when I want to turn it on, hit it to turn it off so that this little fan doesn't stay running all the time and stuff like that. Uh, inside here, the screen I mounted in, uh, just because I wanted to have status updates and like you see on my blog, you know, my blog, I just like stuff with screens. So I used uh, my CNC mill, drew up a little file and cut this out. Uh, and then basically the screen, when you pull it out, kind of has a foam that goes, you know, all the way around the edge of the screen. So I literally, you know, crazy glued the screen inside here, just, you know, held it real still. Uh, it will kind of fog up this plastic when you do that. Uh, and I read a lot of stuff saying it's going to be a pain to get that off, but literally, uh, I think I used some nail polish like acetone and just rubbed it and it ended up coming off as really no big deal. It didn't mess up the plastic at all or anything, so... And I actually waited like a day and a half before even cleaning it, so, you know, pretty much there was no issue with that. Uh, I can't really guarantee it every time, but for my setup, it didn't seem to have a problem. Uh, all the stuff inside here, I basically, uh, let me get rid of that reflection. You see there's some double stick tape there. So it's at 3M, uh, it comes in a little red roll like this. I mean, it's super sticky tape. It pretty much lasts forever. It's not like that garbage uh, white double-sided tape. Uh, the only thing I had to watch is, the first time I put this little uh, Wi-Fi card in here, I stuck the double-sided tape on the antenna of the Wi-Fi card, and, you know, not really thinking it was going to be a big deal, and apparently it was a big deal. This must conduct just enough where, literally, this card couldn't get on my wireless network. So, you know, I kind of looked at it, and I, I checked the wiring, and the wiring was all fine, so I figured it must be kind of something dumb like that. So I pulled it off, stuck it into an area where I think there was just a ground plane right here, on this card so it wasn't actually interfering with anything. Uh, there's a little uh, voltage regulator inside here. It's a little DC to DC converter. It can take anything from 7 to 36 volts. Convert it to 5 volts. It has plenty of power to run the Chumbi, uh, the screen and everything. It doesn't get warm. It costs like 3 or 4 bucks from DigiKey. I'll post the, the part number on the blog too. Uh, a great little three pin converter, you know, in place of like say a 7805 or, or something like that that's gonna, just a linear regulator is going to get real hot. Uh, and then I have kind of this big old goofy USB connection in there because USB is not really the connection type I wanted to use, but it was the only thing I had laying around that would meet my requirement of fitting through the slot back here and uh, a shield the cable, you know, shield the connection and all that. So uh, I just kind of ended up going with it. So let me plug it in here. I'll just clip this back in. Uh, and how I plug it in is I just take it, I take this little guy here and I'll basically just uh, shimmy it through there and plug it in. So it's plugged in and I basically kind of have to push some of this cable inside here to get it uh, going so that when I set it in, you know, the cable doesn't bind up inside there or anything like that. Uh, and then I just click it in like that. And I press the button here. Uh, to turn it on. I'm not quite sure if you can hear the fan or not that's going. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit and show you what's going on. Get it in the range here of the camera. So you'll see on there if the camera wants to focus, uh, it says entering robot mode. So there's actually a document called uh, Chumby is a robot or a controller robot from a Chumby. Uh, I'll post a link on there. And it tells you how to basically go into the OS on the uh, on the Chumby. Let me turn this here, see if that helps some. It tells you how to go into the OS on the Chumby, edit it so that uh, you can create your own startup file so it doesn't start up the Chumby stuff that it would normally start up. Uh, let's see. That's about as good as it's going to get. And uh, you basically edit it so that you can start up your own stuff. Put your own little messages on here. Uh, it has a bunch of cool stuff. So you set this up uh, to run your own stuff. At the bottom here, let me see if I can get any better. You'll see it says, starting USB to serial redirection on port 1234. So I'm basically running a thing in here. I have a blog write up on it. That what I've done essentially is make a you know, what the standard USB connection to uh, to your robot would be. So, normally, 
you would take this thing, you would plug it in from this little spot right here, the little uh, USB connection, and you plug it into your computer and it, you know, it comes up as a USB uh, COM port essentially so then you can use the terminal program connect into here and Nito has a bunch of little commands that show up you type help and it's on my blog you know all the commands that show up so they really made it kinda you know user slash you know developer friendly for other people to want to go in and mess with it so what I did with this little chumby computer is essentially I bring that USB connection into here the chumby connects to it it then takes it redirects that to port 1234 so that I can use uh, PuTTY or any you know SSH terminal program uh, connect in uh, it's actually not SSH uh, it's just you literally redirect it so I connect to port 1234 uh, you know essentially with a, a dumb client and it has done essentially the same thing as what that USB cable would have been to my computer so I can take this guy drive him around remotely uh, connect him into the robot operating system anything like that uh, because in Linux, you can get a program called uh, SoCat, which is also listed on the blog, that will redirect this connection to a uh, basically a link on your computer so that you can redirect stuff uh, from the Linux side to think that that is a COM port. So you kind of make this whole virtual link, essentially, that removes this USB cable that would have gone out of the back. So, you know, it's kind of this elaborate setup to do that. Uh, but the end result is, you know, it literally cost me 39 bucks for this. A dustbin and you know put all this stuff in and this thing's completely remote uh, I could literally uh, the way this connects in and everything else uh, you know most of the stuff it's got Python running on this you can write a Python application that would do some control and things like that which is kind of some of the stuff I'll work on next uh, maybe a Python program that will be friendly for someone that has this just to plug it in standard even if they don't want to make one of these things to their computer and and really play around with some of the features and see you know the laser scanner plotted on the screen and different things like that uh, and then when I'm done using this I can just you know press this button it turns off and I go stick the thing back on the charger so you know it was really a nice setup I talked about it for a while that I wanted to make this and I kinda made uh, you'll see on my blog an older post it was kind of a goofy setup out of cardboard to see if it worked I had that one battery powered and I just decided you know I want to power it off uh, the the robot itself just because it's got you know battery packs and it's got a decent amount of power so why not uh, and I think it came out pretty clean uh, you know the robot maintains complete functionality so it's not like I bought this thing and then trashed it you know just to kind of play around with it and it has no purpose you know it's like I can still use this thing as a vacuum and then you know when I'm done vacuuming pull it out pop this little guy in right here and play around with it so uh, you know not a bad deal if you can find one of these little uh, chumby guys used or something else. I mean, you're going to rip out everything and chuck the the plastic and all that stuff. So it's a uh, it's a pretty sweet setup. So probably uh, following posts, you'll see maybe a an application or something for the computer that lets us talk to this a little more and see you know all these different sensors and there's an accelerometer in here and all different kinds of things that we could kind of talk to and play around with. You know, I think it'd be super cool to be able to plot the laser scanner on this little screen itself, but that might be outside of my realm of uh, programming, or it might be outside of the realm of this little chumby itself, which is probably more likely the case. Uh, but definitely hooked to the computer. So uh, stay tuned, and you know we'll see what we can come up with next.